Every government has its Secret Service branch. America, it's CIA. France, Desi M. Bureau. England, MI5. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Is there the law? Yes, sir. All right, carry on, doctor. Bruce Drake. Right the man about town. I was at the theater when I got your call. Good show. Julius Caesar. Culture. Uh, come in here. Uh, There's more room. Thank you. Who was he? Another noble Roman. Pietro Lambrosia, the Italian minister who was so outspoken at the conference. He was a good man. And many enemies. A pattern, same as before. Mm -hmm. Well, you asked me to give you the earliest possible warning in case anything like this should happen again. It brings the score up to seven. Kalinsky in Madrid, Hoffmeyer in Budapest, Mike Darrell in Turin. You can forget the roll call. I, uh, I know it by heart. But the baffling thing is the total lack of political bias in all these killings. Spanish royalist in Edinburgh, a communist diplomat in France, an Irish MP in Italy. Precisely. I think I gave you your answer last time, Mr. Hardy. I find it very hard to swallow, particularly in this day and age. Well, times change, but men don't. It's hundred years this time, huh? You remember, sometime back in the States, there was an organization... ...an organization called Murder Incorporated. You name them, we'll kill them at a price. That's right. You believe there's something of that sort over here in Europe? Six men, eh? Yes. Thank you. Six men, all in the widest possible sense, completely different, but all killed in an identical way. Shot in the back, through the heart, the range between four and five feet, and with a 32 caliber bullet. If you're assuming you are right. I think I may be right, Mr. Hardy. What possible motive can there be? Well, any history book will tell you. Well, take Julius Caesar, for instance. To have great power and authority also means you have enemies. Enemies with unnatural fears and hates. Men too scared to do their own killing. You believe they're paying others to do it for them? Well, how else would you explain all this? Each victim had his back to the killer at the time that he was shot. Now, this indicates that it was not an enemy that he'd recognized, but a stranger that he'd no reason to fear. Where does that leave us? Supposing I put the word about that there was an enemy that I wanted uh, got rid of, and that I was willing to pay a lot of money to have him eliminated. And how would you start putting the word about? Well, six other men have the same problem. They solved it. Yes, but how? The Bush Telegraph in the underworld, Mr. Hardy. Place the word in the right quarters, and in the end, you usually find what you want. Now, you must find me a contact, someone who can introduce me to the right people. The wrong people? Uh, that shouldn't be difficult. Miss Light. The next evening, I was waiting to be introduced to London Soho Society as Lee J. Maddox, affluent operator of New York City. Come on. Mr. Hardy's contact was on time. Mr. Maddox? Yeah. We're right with you, honey. I have a card from Mr. Hardy. Ah, huh. huh. kind words from Mr. Hardy. You worked for him before? Yes. What sort of job? I think that's Mr. Hardy's business. You could be right at that. How well do you know Soho? I was born there. I'm one of the landmarks. <laughs> and a very nice one, if I may say so. How much did he tell you? Nothing. He said he'd leave it to you. Uh, I'm uh, looking for an organization that uh, makes murder its business. You pay, we kill them, no questions asked. Do you know anything like that? No. Do you think it's possible there could be such an outfit? If you say so. Where do I fit into this? Uh, Hardy has said that you know everyone who is worth knowing. Yes, I know my way around. Uh, I'm willing to take his word for it. Before he sent my husband up, we ran a dive ourselves in Soho. In that case, uh, let's be on our way, shall we? Okay. Okay. It 
was tougher than I'd anticipated. For three nights, all I got was the, uh, the old-fashioned runaround. I was trying to hook a big fish, a killer shark, and I was ready to play off my line a long way. At last, I got a nibble. It led me to a neurotic young lady with an obsession, the gambling fever. Kim called at the home of the gambling lady and brought her to my hotel. A rustle of green paper soothed her nerves. She thought the name I was seeking was Collingwood Nash. The cards said as much. They said more. I see a house. A grand house. In the Grand Square. Where is this Grand Square? In London? Yes, Eaton Square. 385 Eaton Square. <laughs> okay, honey. But you, uh, you cheated, didn't you? I was beginning to have an uneasy feeling that my information had not been reliable. Neither the house nor anything about it seem to fit. Good morning, sir. My name's Maddox, Lee J. Maddox. I want to see Mr. Collingwood Nash. I'm afraid he's just leaving for the races, sir. Well, I have to say, won't wait. What is it, Tom? Uh, a Mr. Maddox, sir. He insists. Maddox? I don't think we've met before, have we? Ah, there's my puppet. Well, my little darling, and how are you today? Oh, Elliot, please don't excite him. Yes, why so? My own child, too. Well, he's just had his bottle. Come on, Annie. Uh, Maddox, you say? That's right. Confidential. I'm afraid I can only spare you a moment. I'm just off to Ascot. Come in here, will you? Thank you. Ah. Nice little spread you got here. I'm glad you approve. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Lee J. Maddox? Of course, forgive me for being so vague. I've got other things on my mind. I have a horse running in the three o'clock. Yeah, hey, I know the feeling. You a racing man? Yeah, Belmont, Saratoga, Churchill Downs, happy times. Not anymore, I'm afraid. Now, if you'll tell me your business. I got your name from a mutual friend. Indeed? Yeah. It's my first time in Europe. I'm a little out of touch in these parts. Back home, I wouldn't have needed any help, but a, a certain uh, situation has arisen here, and uh, I understand that you are the man to, uh, to square it. Well, what kind of situation? I want to get somebody off my back. I don't understand. I want to get rid of somebody. You mean you want to dispense with somebody's services? <laughs> yeah, you could put it that way. Yes. Could you be a little more explicit? All right, Mr. Nash. You want it on the line? I want somebody eliminated, disposed of, rubbed out, six feet under. The sooner it's done, the better I'll be pleased. Are you quite sane? Charles, show Mr. Maddox to the door. He's leaving. Where at Ascot for me? Mr. Maddox? Yeah. Where are you staying? The plaza, Suite 805. Then don't be surprised if you get a visit from the police. Cosmopolitan Services, Mayfair 0051. Our representative called when you were out. She will call again. I come. Mr. Lee 
J. Maddox? Yeah. I'm Mrs. Hammond. I left a card. Oh. Uh, this. Uh, Cosmopolitan Services. How'd you come to get my name? A contact told us you might be needing our services. Contact, eh? And uh, what particular service was mentioned, Mrs. Hammond? Why? Contact didn't particularize, Mr. Maddox. And what services are you offering? We have a slogan that says it all. You name it, we supply it. Such as? Anything, Mr. Maddox. Just name it. Anything? Please, Mr. Maddox. You don't have to spar with me. I want to help you. Now, what do you want? Supposing I wanted a man killed. To be arranged. I'm not joking, Mrs. Hammond. It's not a thing to joke about, Mr. Maddox. All right. So what's my first move? You've made it. Be expensive, of course. We'd want fifty thousand dollars in used bills. Once the fee is paid, you leave it all to us. It's a lot of money. I'd expect results. We never make mistakes, Mr. Maddox. That's reassuring. You got yourself a deal, Mrs. Hammond. Good. So you'll be hearing from us. And don't allow anyone to follow me, Mr. Maddox. As if I would. Well, the deal's off. I'll be seeing. You must have the money here by four o'clock. Four o'clock. Okay. Forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. If you want to count them, sir. No, I'll take your word for it. Right. Alex. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good day, sir. Good day. Special delivery, sir. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, that's for you. Thank you. Oh, oh bye. Thank you, sir. My killers were nibbling at the bait now. I still had to land them, and alive. The case was for the money. The card inside the lid required only three details. Name, date, place. Name, Ivor Towers. Date, July 14th. Place, Hotel Gustave Lyon, Paris. Hello, Maddox. Good afternoon, Mr. Maddox. Cosmopolitan Services. You received our container? Yeah. And you're ready to deliver it? Yeah. As instructed? Yeah. As instructed. There's a card attached inside the lid. I've uh, filled it in. Splendid. Then would you please leave your hotel immediately? Standing on the same side of the street, you will catch a number 74 omnibus. 74. You'll have the container with you, of course, and soon. Yeah, sure thing. What next? You can safely leave the rest to us, Mr. Maddox. Pity me. We're going to be late, you know. Late for what? Late, of course. Nearly five. So what? Oh, haven't you dropped something? Things is all up. It was unsigned. It told me to leave the bus at the next stop. It gave precise instructions as to where I had to place the money.
party. You've taken your time. Well, dead end. In more senses than one, I'm afraid. You left for money? Yeah, and you can uh, whistle goodbye to it. Well, really, Drake, it's a considerable sum, and I'm responsible for it. Oh, well, you can charge it up to lunches and riotous living, can't you? It's not funny, Drake. You've just given our money away. It's a great pity there isn't a real Ivor Tower staying in Paris on the 14th. Otherwise, they could shoot him and you'd get your money's worth, Mr. That's an idea. What? Not you. Why not? In my present frame of mind, I have no objection. They'll kill you, Drake, just as they did the others. Oh, no, Hardy, they won't. The others didn't know they were going to be shot in the back. I will. I'm on my way to Paris, Mr. Hardy, and don't worry, you're going to get your money's worth. Contact me, Mr. Ivor Towers, Hotel Gustave Lyon, all right? It was the 14th of July, France's day of jubilation, when I arrived in Paris to keep an appointment with a stranger in a small hotel. A stranger who was waiting to shoot me in the back. How would he greet me? Gravely? With a smile? How would he introduce himself? Would he come up with an introduction from an old friend I'd never known, or to sell me a lucky ticket in the Lottery Nationale? Or would he bring up my iced water or a, a registered packet? I only had to wait. Someone was on his way with the answer in the barrel of a neat little 32 automatic. Yes, he missed. Gone mad. You are Mr. Towers? That's right. Vogel, Heinrich Vogel, Hamburg. We have not met before, but there was the correspondence. Was it? New York account. Vogel, Heinrich Vogel. Oh, it is so hot. Do you mind if I open the window? Oh, of course not. You have a glass of water for me? Sure. Um, Vogel, you said? Hamburg. Consolidated plastics. You are Mr. Towers of New York. That's right. My name's Towers. Fog Towers have incorporated? No. Ivor Towers. No, oh, it seems as though we both got the wrong man. It happens in Paris on 14th July. Anything happens. Anything. I hope you will forgive me. I do apologize. A thousand pardons. I couldn't right. help it because I didn't know Don't worry what was about going. It. Oh, excuse me, little one. I'm so sorry. Yeah. You're just a great big bull in a china shop. And you like big bulls, eh? I think you're cute, Grandpa. I like young bulls best. Alone? All alone on a night like this? No, not alone. I, uh, I have an appointment. Then break it. You got a date with me. Come on, let's get out of this mall. I'm afraid that this is one date that I can't break. Oh. Then I'll come in and wait with you. Okay. A redhead or a blonde? She's pretty as me? Not half as pretty, but she'd be very upset if she found you here when she arrived. So would you mind uh, running along, please? Young man, how you waste your chances. Okay, I'll go. Uh, just one drink, huh? We'll drink to pleasant memories that might have been. I have only water. What a Puritan. Okay, then we'll drink some water. You know, this date of yours, I think she stood you up. No. She'll be here. You're kidding yourself, Mr. Towers. You'll never see her. down now. Brunette, gold lamy dress. Throw her out of your sight. They told me the bulletproof vest was safe up to four feet. I was very glad she hadn't come any closer. Mr. 
Mr. Nashen. I'm not at all sure. He'll you see know. me, all right. Madams, don't you understand that you're not welcome here? Will you kindly get out of my house? Get your wife out. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Tell her to get out. I think you'd better do what he says, my What does he think he is? If it was any of your business, Mrs. Nash, I'd let you know. As it's not, I'm telling you to get out! Oh, my dear. Mr. Maddox, in my house, no one raises his voice. Huh. I'm going to raise a lot more than that. Will you explain yourself, please? I paid your ham-fisted organization 50,000 bucks to have Ivor Towers rubbed out. What is this? 50,000 bucks for nothing! I'm here to collect! You know, this time I will send for the police. This morning, Ivor Towers is walking the streets of Paris. And because of that, I stand to lose 200,000 bucks. Sir. Charles. 200,000 bucks on a deal that I had planned. Charles, please ring for the police. Look, I wanted Towers killed. I told you that, didn't I? Before I time to shower, your representative was round at my hotel. You were the only one that knew my hotel and sweet number. Just you. Leave that for a moment, Charles. You've a bit of attentive memory. <laughs> it pays off. But you're wrong about one thing. What's that, Mr. Nash? Tars, he's dead. Now get out. I'm sorry, I don't believe you, Mr. Nash. Get out, or I will call the police. Uh, you? You call the police? Certainly. You're not going to tell them that you're an accessory to a murder. There isn't any murder. He's still alive. I know my operators, and I know he's dead. How come there's nothing about it in the Paris papers? I don't read the Paris papers. I want confirmation, Mr. Nash. In what way? The operator that killed him. I want him here. Right now. Good afternoon, miss. Mr. Collingwood Nash is in the library. Ah, excellent timing, my dear. You made it sound quite urgent. Our friends seem to doubt your efficiency. In what way? Tars. They say he's not dead. Of course he's dead. I shot him through the heart. Who says I didn't? I do. Tars. I'm very much alive. Is this some stupid joke? If it is, then you won't be sharing it, Mr. Nash. Oh, I demand to know what's going on. My name is Drake, John Drake, one of the gentlemen over there, Detective Inspector Meyer, CID. The other gentleman, just for the record, is Detective Sergeant Davis, also CID. Thank you very much. All right, uh, come along. You too, miss. Come along, miss. 